Spoiler alert, the following podcast includes discussions on film that may potentially, intentionally or inadvertently, reveal plot twists, character traits, story details, up to and including endings, that might otherwise be considered spoilers. Proceed at your own risk. You are listening to Movie Sucktastic. Become black. You ask anyone on the street, they'll say, that man? He's black. You're a credit to your race. Sounds like some bad movie. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Um. Oh, man. How do you do, neighbor? Hi. Hi. Welcome to Movie Sucktastic, everybody. <laughs> oh. I'm, I'm Scott, and that's Joey. Hey, Scott. So you can figure out who you disagree with during the course of the show. Wow. <laughs> I mean, is that that's just like a general uh, thing, not like specifically this episode? Is that what no, you're saying? In general. In general. It's very, it's very seldom you and I actually come to blows on things. Yeah, that, that is true. Uh, yeah. That's yeah. why we do the podcast, because I think if we disagreed on everything, that'd get boring very quickly. And also, if I agreed, agreed with you all the time. Well, yeah, no, we have the perfect balance. I really do think that. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah. So, this episode, episode number 200 and something. 16. 16, exactly. Uh, we are doing um, my challenge to Joey, the 1970s Melvin uh, B- Van Peebles film, Watermelon Man. That's right. Starring uh, Godfrey Cambridge. Um... Oh, what was her name? Uh, something Parsons. She got an Oscar for Bonnie and Clyde. Estelle Parsons. Estelle, yeah. Uh, Howard Kane. Uh, and that's really it. <laughs> yeah, not a lot of big names in the film. Yeah, that, that that's as far as it goes. And this uh, was a challenge to you because the last film we did was Soul Man. Right. Which was, uh, so uh, I so I picked uh, that was a a white person who pretends to be black. So I picked a film about a white man that wakes up morning one morning a la uh, Metamorphosis, uh, Franz Kafka's Metamorphosis, to discover he has turned into, instead of a cockroach, a black man. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Um, now, when he does wake up and he's black, they show this, this like, hellfire of flames, like, going up into, uh, <laughs> up into the sky, almost like he's being punished for being such a bigot and a racist. He and... wasn't that big of a bigot or racist. I mean, and that's the thing... I, I want to. Some of the some of the like uh, descriptions of the movie will say a, a white bigot wakes up to find himself black. It's not like he's a, a like he he's what you would call. I think I saw some one place, um, like like right now on IMDb it says an extremely bigoted white man, and I don't think he really is. He's supposed to be kind of like an every like you're casually racist. Where right. he's not like he's not racist per se, but he just doesn't care. Uh, you know, he, he finds it funny. Uh, he's he's not like a clan member, but yeah, he, you know, he makes occasional black right. jokes to black people, stuff like that. So I, I mean, he's 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 like that casual bigotry. Right, and much like Soul Man, a pretty tame film. It really only earns its R rating in the last fifteen minutes of the movie. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it takes up until the sex scene to actually earn an R. 
Yeah, and then yeah. after that, after the sex scene, uh, <laughs> he's at a, 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 a strip club. Um, yeah. You know, it just, there was only a couple of sh- shots in the, in the beginning of the film of some brief nudity uh, mm-hmm. of his white ass, and then when he's black, of his black ass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was kind of weird, but I, I don't know why they emphasized on the ass. The 70s. Yeah, you know, you're, you're going to. Is that all it is? That. Yeah, it's the 70s. <laughs> The seventies. Yeah. Funny. Um, so, yeah. Now, Gabri. Now, this is by Melvin Van Peebles, right? Uh, Mar- Mario's of, dad. Yeah, Mario Van Peebles' father. Uh-huh. Pardon me. Uh-huh. And um, uh, it's interesting about the film. This was his first studio film. Uh, he had he had done some short films before. Had moved to uh, Paris or to France, and then Paris. And uh, did some films there, and that's where the studio saw his films, and they thought he was a French auteur. They didn't realize he was actually <laughs> you know, a, a black American that had moved to France. So and, did, did they react to him the, much in the same way that he had white people react to, uh, <laughs> to I, I don't know, Jeff in this but, film? But it was it was his first studio film. He he didn't write it. It was written by Herman Rauscher. He wrote the uh, the Summer of Forty Two. I think it's it is the uh, uh, and then the Class of Forty Four. Uh, he did a lot of most of his films are very white right uh th- this one film isn't it's interesting no and uh so he directed the film and uh after the film came out it was a financial success uh, it grossed i believe 10 million which in 1970 uh oh that's is, gigantic yeah and so columbia i'm pretty sure it was columbia offered it, it him is. a three picture deal and he declined it and instead did sweet badass uh sweet i always get i always fuck up the name yeah because it's sweet it's... sweet 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 back's badass song which kind of started the whole genre of i wouldn't i don't want to say black exploitation but but black cinema it oh, started it, this it, whole it started it the whole definitely movement. helped it absolutely it, it well it, it took put it on a new keel it was definitely a, a turning point in black cinema american black cinema and um, and he did that instead by himself, funded it with his own money, and uh, Bill Cosby threw in some cash too. I I I, I hear. Uh-huh. And um, Columbia after that was like, well, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> well, well and the whole thing was he wanted he wanted complete control over a film after he did this because right. uh, he didn't like people trying to control what he was doing. Now he not only uh, directed watermelon man he wrote all the music for it so he so he could have control over the music oh okay uh, even the song where are the children <laughs> i don't know about that but <laughs> they play it twice at the end where are the children <laughs> <laughs> it's just ridiculous well that that one song uh in the last in the third act uh uh-huh. love love that's america Oh right, right, right. The guy's like talking over it's like spoken word over the music. Yep. Um, that that itself is one. It, w- it was released as a single after the film came out, and back in 2011 when the Occupy Wall Street movement started, uh, they started making a bunch of YouTube videos with that song in the background of police brutality and stuff. No shit. Yeah, and that, that it was actually endorsed by. Uh, when when Van Peebles heard about it, he actually endorsed it. He said, "Yeah, go for it. That's great." Cool. So you know, our artists sticking by that stuff. I guess YouTube would still flag it for uh, uh, though. Uh, but yeah, pff, yeah. <laughs> Fucking Fuckers. YouTube. Let me tell you, we're, we're not going to get into this again. We're just not. <laughs> I know. I had to say it because I know. You, <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. You. I can go on a tangent, and then we won't talk about watermelon man. <laughs> but, but that you know, that's kind of the 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 gist of. Uh, Mel- Melvin Van Peebles. Uh... Now, uh, uh, another interesting thing I-, I found was that apparently the studio um, had a happier ending to the film. Well, a w- happier white did, ending. Did to he the become film. white again? Yeah, he wakes up white. Of yeah, course, of the course end. he does. <laughs> <laughs> white studio heads were like, yeah, you know, I, th- I think this should end with him being white. Um, right, and, and 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 I'm sure and. I'm sure they don't go into detail of, of the specifics of the ending, but I can guarantee you it involved him becoming white, staying in the neighborhood, getting his family back, and keeping the money, but still being a pioneer. Not a pioneer, that's the wrong word. Um, 
I learned a very uh, important lesson. Yeah, the learning a lesson sympathetic towards uh, the Negro, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, helping in the community, uh, probably still opening his own insurance company and focusing on uh, the, the black, uh, you know, customers and, and helping them more than anything. Right. I guarantee you that's the way they were going to go with it. And Mario or Melvin, he's like, fuck that shit. <laughs> well, well, from what I've read, well, because the studio said he... what else they wanted to do is they wanted to actually cast a white person and then have him in blackface the whole film. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they were talking about Alan Arkin or Jack <laughs> Lemon in that. Uh-huh. And it's like, and then uh, Melvin uh, Van Peebles, he's very smart, and he said, no, how about we do a black guy and have him in white face for about 30 minutes or so, 35 minutes, and then for the last hour, uh, it's a black guy. Like, hey, a real black guy. Because it's easier to do do it the other way around, makeup-wise. I'm not even talking about you know appeasing people. I'm talking about makeup-wise. Because doing a white person in blackface, one... It, that's really racist. <laughs> not, not necessarily. Again, we agree that Soul Man wasn't a racist film. Correct, but you know, right. in the seventies, it would have been. Well, here, here's the big thing: is like in this kind of situation where you're trying to have someone as a black man, right? I, I just, it's just like, you know what it is. Um, I, I've seen when I was what it is, white, brother. <laughs> I tell you what it is. <laughs> I tell you. I tell, tell me you. what it is. I tell you. I, I'm telling you. I'm waiting. Um, and, and we go totally racist. Like it's not even like it's, it's horrible. No. Um, <laughs> if you if you look, uh, I, I remember uh, because it was looking like we might have to do white chicks. So I was watching that and reading some stuff on oh, that. God. And if you read like message boards for yep. white chicks, you get, you get these people say, "Oh, you know, oh, a bunch of a couple of black guys in in white face." But if it was white people in black face, it'd be different. It's like. Yeah, you know what, asshole? It would. Because <laughs> there's not a history of, of uh, white people being demeaned by authoritative blacks in control <laughs> and mimicking them. Are you, are you, are you fucking stupid? <laughs> really? Yes. No, yep. yeah, there is a big fucking difference. Yes, and I'm yes, sure they, they laughed about that when they made white chicks because that's the whole fucking point. I wonder who they're going to vote for this election. Yeah, right? That's a Trump uh, supporter right there. Um <laughs> And, it, and you know what? I, like, there, there's no fucking way I'm watching white chicks on purpose. It's <laughs> I really, <laughs> I really wanted to make sure that we stuck to your original challenge. Um, and very briefly, <laughs> I'll mention that I got it at my local library. Uh, only two libraries in the system out of 81 libraries. Uh, only two of them had it, and I went out of my way to go get it. Yeah. If you're if you're listening to this and you do want to watch the film, and I, I kind of recommend it. it, it is a decent I film. I enjoyed this movie. Yeah, um, you can rent it on Amazon. You can rent it on Amazon. I think it's two ninety nine. You can rent it on Three. YouTube. Three ninety nine. Oh, it's on YouTube as it's well. It's cheaper on YouTube. I believe it's two ninety nine on YouTube. Okay, well, it's high def on um, on Amazon. Amazon high def three ninety nine. Man, you can't or find rental. this movie anywhere, anywhere. I mean, unless Except- we unless we bought it like through a streaming service or if we bought it at online or uh, at a you know brick and mortar store and i wasn't mm-hmm. about to do that for a review but um I'm, and I'm, it's, I'm, inter- it's interesting that this film is not more widely known because it is again it, it was a it started an entire uh, uh genre in black cinema american black cinema right. it um it was a, the biggest grossing independent film of the time i believe Oh, was it really? Wow. I, I think so. I, independent, you know, like totally independent. Or no, that was that. Or was, am I getting that mixed up with um, Sweet Sweet Back? I might be getting that mixed up with Sweet Sweet Back because this uh, wasn't independent. It was yeah, Columbia. You, yeah, you might. I, I might, but but again, it's like it's right on the heels of that, and Sweet Sweet Back is is much more well known than this film. I, I think this film. I, I only knew of this film through other people that are into film. Mm-hmm. You know, like you don't hear this film referenced anywhere. Um, no, no, not at all. I didn't know it existed yeah. until you challenged it to me. So yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, so that's one, one, one reason I, I wanted to because this is not a, a common film to be here about today. Uh, it's it does. I think it does hold up. And I honestly, there's nothing I tire more whether it's books or movies when you so you read a review and someone says, "Well, this film from 1980, 1953 about uh, the uh, 
police procedural. It's a bit dated. It's like, <laughs> is it? Is it dated? <laughs> is it because it's 50 years old that it might be dated? Asshole. That's not unusual. <laughs> You don't need to point out. I, I, I thought I thought that Shakespeare play was a bit dated. I mean, you know, they know, yeah. no, yeah, fuck it I is. Mean, uh, you know, they're, they're not stabbing right. stabbeth through their hearteth lately, are they? <laughs> but I dick. I do think it's it it's worth bringing up when you watch a film from 30, 40, 50 years ago and say, yes, this film's still relevant today. It's still speaking about a subject matter uh, on 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 uh, points right. that are still arguable and relevant to this day sure oh yeah very much so uh, throughout the entire film uh that's all i kept thinking was like they're hitting on all these different notes um even in the in light well, of everything that's happening now uh it's just like he can't walk down the street without people screaming <laughs> because he's in a white neighborhood well uh, and, he can't and, walk unless, down the street you know, without someone accusing him of stealing something <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, I like how they set up he's, that he's not just a white guy. He's actually a very obnoxious white guy. Which makes other white people uncomfortable when he does these racist type things, like putting uh, his finger against the back of the uh, the elevator uh, handler's head, you know, saying, stick him up. It's like people in the elevator are noticeably uncomfortable with that. Well, it... it well, and here's the thing. What, what I like to uh, they're of, uncomfortable. Well, they're yep. uncomfortable with it, and it's like you know they, they're probably very much in the in in uh, the status of they can go live their lives. Uh, they can go do whatever. I won't bother them just as long as they don't live in my neighborhood. Like that was that kind of attitude. Well, uh, what, what with I every was white person is, in the film. What I thought was interesting, and I, and I and I feel like it's intentional, and not just uh, you know a part of um, Godfrey Cambridge's. Uh, routine so mm -hmm. to speak is that when he's white in the beginning of the film as obnoxious as he is everybody puts up with him yep because, he's because he's like he's an, is, is, as loud and obnoxious as he is he's still kind of invisible yes but once he becomes black all the obnoxious things he used to do before not only aren't accepted but but even normal things he used to do is shunned and and it, it, it's that whole you know uh white privilege thing which again is relevant today i don't like using the term because it's way overused by people on the far left who don't have a fucking clue <laughs> uh but i mean it, it does illustrate that whole idea of, of that it's a different world and it's different today than in 1970 let's be fucking real but it's still there <laughs> so yes yeah, so like you say he, they have this thing where he races the bus to work every day uh at, but when he he's a black guy and he's he's r racing the bus, <laughs> the minute like white people see the black guy running, <laughs> well that <laughs> like, one scene that out. one scene I love where the woman is watering the lawn and she's screaming so much and in such fear of her life she's spraying water all over her face. Right. <laughs> she's just so ridiculously. Oh my god. All Black these good people. Samaritans, like 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 rush <laughs> rush him and block him against the cop car that pulls up. I say, all right, what is that? He stole something. He had to have said, well, what? Did anybody see him steal something? It's like, I don't know, but he. Why was he running then? Well, and, and the thing is, I can't <laughs> I can't even say. You know, they probably exaggerated that a little bit because I know they didn't. If <laughs> back then, and even in now, if you saw, let's say it was a predominantly white neighborhood or an all white neighborhood wealthy na area and you just saw a random black person walking through the neighborhood guaranteed one of them calls a cop Gu that's guaranteed or, or running maybe I, not I, running I, 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 well, I mean like you know a black man running oh. through through town forget it I, I know someone that got stopped by the cops because he was running uh, like through Bloomfield uh, Main Main Street in Bloomfield uh, oh, really? the center he was he was he was tr he was trying to catch a bus. Then uh, he was black, and cops grabbed him. And then like they pulled the whole. Well, you put the description of somebody. So oh, really, really, <laughs> at this time, at this specific time, you had the description of somebody running down the street. You know, I had that shit pulled on me, and I'm not even black. And you fit the description of somebody. Yeah, I had, yeah. Did yeah, this person I, happen I to be up. like six foot? You know, forever. <laughs> yeah, and, that, that was, I was walking. To, I worked at morning shift at the post office, so it's twelve thirty. I'm walking to the post office, and these cops pulled up. It's like, yeah, you got some identification stuff. It's all right, fine. 
and uh, I'm, I'm I'm wearing that army jacket I had with the handcuffs on the side, and then <laughs> and, and like a sheriff's badge on it. Oh god! <laughs> and he says, "I uh, sorry to stop you. We were just, uh, you know, we we had a description of somebody. You know, we fit somebody to fit your description uh, in the area. Say so, really, somebody like six and a half feet tall with an army jacket with a sheriff's badge and handcuffs on it. That description came up because I'd like to meet that guy. Yeah, because. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna buy that guy a beer. Yeah. <laughs> that's oh, utter, that's the only ridiculous. time I've ever had that line used on me. But even I've had that used on me. So, right. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I, so when that that happens, and then um, you know, uh, his the attitude of his boss towards him at work shifts dramatically. Uh, he can't get into the yacht club to, to sell insurance to the wealthy people. Yeah, which has. Uh, <laughs> has a little st- into a- statue of a little black man with the <laughs> black face and the pink lips and it's just like so jock- racist yeah the little racist yeah, jockey little yeah. racist jockey and he's like I- i'm i'm having lunch with mr so-and-so and they're like oh yes uh just wanted to let you know he, he had a business meeting oh. it's like like news got around town fast that uh, good old jeff has become black <laughs> yeah now here's what what i found interesting because in the, when he first goes to work black, and this is after two days of staying at home uh, and trying to, to make himself white, uh, taking milk, milk baths, doing uh, nonviolent voodoo, right. uh, buying cosmetics to whiten his skin and hair and stuff. And um, Can I just say something very quickly? Yeah, please. How is the makeup in 1970 more believable than white chicks? Because, well, he's trying to be a guy... Not a woman, so that's but different. still, uh, yeah, they 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 really they, they, there's a lot more involved than trying to make a a black man look like a white girl than a black man look like a, a white man. I would say, it, but it, it's just I don't know. It, it just whatever the technique that they used to make this film to make him look white. It's not perfect. I'm not saying that, but it's much better than I was expecting. Looking at the the cover of the DVD. Yeah, the, the cover the, does not. It looks like Herman Munster in the cover. The, the cover not, of the DVD. Yeah. I was just waiting yeah. to to watch to watch this and it be like in, insane. I, I'm just like this is gonna look so bad. And I I said thirty minutes. He actually becomes black twenty minutes in. Mm-hmm. It, it's there. The other hour and twenty minutes of the film is just him as a black man. Yeah, I I thought the film was very level headed. I thought so too. Unlike unlike some of the reactionary shit you'll get on the far left. Wow. Now, what I was going to compare is so we said like when he first runs to work on that first day, right. he gets sworn by these white people who claim he stole something, and the cops show up because it has to have. Yeah. And but at the same time, when he goes to the yacht club later on that day to try to meet someone for insurance, and they won't let him in, and he starts getting upset about that. A group of white people and a couple of black people, but mainly white people, crowd around him and start cheering with him against them for not letting him into the place. Oh, right. That's your right. So, so there, at least there's, uh, on a realistic level, um, they're kind of showcasing that you did have white people in that movement as well. You had white people marching with Martin Luther King and involved in riots and, and protesting and stuff and coming to the defense of black people in with this kind of uh, overt racism. And so having that scene there, I, I thought was, uh, I mean, they weren't attacking him. They, they attacked the, uh, the the bellhop guy. Oh, right, yeah. With, yeah, it wasn't like the way We have rules here. I think the right. only rule they have is no niggers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, re- I really think that's the only rule. Was, and, I, and, I mean, and probably, just, and probably just, don't get caught. <laughs> it's just the, like over anything. Uh, that rule still applies today at several uh, country clubs. Let's uh, not be. Yeah. Let's not be. <laughs> let's not be silly now. If you You're think right. that shit doesn't happen still, it still um, does. But so I, I thought that was interesting. Also, his wife, uh, throughout the film, I thought was very interesting. How they played the th- like it, when she when he she first finds out he's black, it's not like oh you're black I'm not gonna she's fine with it she's actually supportive she's trying right. to help him uh she gets a little angry with him at some points when he he gets reactionary uh well they the make a point she, in, they make a i'm sorry to interrupt you but they make a point in the beginning of the film to show how liberal she is too yeah she, uh, and that's the point too they're trying to show yeah how liberal are you 
and she's kind of okay with it up until the point until she <laughs> he comes over and it's like answers the phone and says, Mr. Gerber? Yeah? Go move out, nigger. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and they do that a few times. But well, actually, they 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 uh, intersperse the doctor. It's like, yeah, it's not your kidneys. <laughs> and then the phone rings again. And he's like, oh, it might be, uh, you know, it might be my hay fever call or uh, whatever other allergy uh-huh. he was talking about. Uh, get out of the neighborhood, nigger. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> You're bringing our home not. values down. <laughs> was was that the doctor? I hope not. <laughs> I'd, I I don't know what I'm assuming they live in. This is California, uh, which apparently real estate has been overpriced even way back then, because <laughs> they were saying you could get forty thousand, almost forty thousand on the open market, like thirty seven five, and my parents bought their first house in like nineteen eighty one for like twenty thousand dollars. I don't know. It's just real estate kick. No no no. That's hey, I'm just saying well, different parts of the country home values were obviously different or higher. Well, and they they had that whole thing with with like you know every like the five or six times he calls it uh, mr cambridge move out nigger and the distinct voice because then when his neighbors show up later on the main guy talking is like yeah we've discovered it's the exact same voice as oh right yeah we've discussed it we'd like we think that we're you know we're afraid about our property values moving down it's like hey you're the money yeah <laughs> it's like so obviously it was him <laughs> so they play, they he's like oh I, i've gotten your phone calls uh that wasn't that wasn't any of us is a like, shut up fred <laughs> yeah <laughs> no but what i like about the wife is she doesn't really start re uh she doesn't get uncomfortable with the idea of him being black right un- until the threatening phone calls start coming as a matter of fact she actually in, in one scene of the film, she looked at him like, man, I'm going to get some dark meat tonight. It's going to be she, Wednesday tonight. It, she was kind of like, yeah, this is kind of, you know, she wasn't, she wasn't rejecting him. She wasn't like this, this right. can't be. She, he was more uh, upset about it than she was. Uh, but oh, yeah. once, once society started threatening them, right. then she became uncomfortable. And that's the part she was. And then later on, when he starts turning on them, he's like, well, I don't know why you turn on our friends, but they're not our friends anymore. Right, and so, and that's what drives them apart. Yeah, like I mean, she says she's, I was liked by everyone. I mean, that was her big thing. She was liked by everyone. He was, she, and he yeah. he goes and out of his it, way to basically tell her, "It's like, listen, this is happening to me, uh, or it's happening to us, but this is happening to me. Th- this is a problem for me. When I go outside of this house, I'm being accosted. I'm being told I'm I'm raping someone. Uh, I, I you know I, I'm being uh, t- told I've stolen something." People aren't right. nice to me anymore, even though I was a dick. <laughs> they put then, up with me, but not anymore. Even his boss, uh, where he says, oh, we could both benefit from this. You can uh, sell insurance to the black community and make sure when you sell it to them, make sure you just sell them our most expensive and just just get them on there because they're going to be poor anyway. He didn't care that he was going to these different people's houses and they were responsible. They had jobs that... You know, they weren't raping and pillaging. Well, he, yeah, well, he was he was filling on the stereotype that... Because he, he says, like, yeah, you know, as long as we have them insured, then it will never become a drain on society. Again, that's where, like, this this kind of um, pervasive uh, cultural racism right. is in there. And then him uh, being with those people, uh, they, you know, they show him at the places, and he, he's, he's uh, giving them advice and showing them different plans they can use and not going into expensive ones and not taking the company's best interests right and that becomes a negative point too because he's actually he cares about these people and that's what i mean like he's not completely bigoted it's it's, it's uh, 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 um, extremely bigoted like the like the imdb description says right i don't think there was anything i don't think it was about someone who's extremely racist if you were extremely bigoted you became black you'd probably just put a gun to your head or something i, I mean, yeah. how do you survive that he, i mean he's he's comfortably white oh and, yeah and and there is again there's that there's that kind of pervasive and it's almost it's almost like he's racist j- just because it's acceptable yeah that's part of society that's yeah how it was that's i mean what, that's part how of many years about. removed or were they from segregated uh, schools and drinking fountains and things like that maybe a decade i mean Not and even, it's and in yeah. some places it still had it at this time mm-hmm. you know I, I think segregation was still around into the mid 70s I'm guessing, but I want to say that I remember reading that. Um, and even his boss, his boss 
at the very very beginning when he comes in and he's thinking it's a tan or potentially could be black he said listen you know you're an educated man uh you know and, and he like he doesn't care but something happens uh something happens with his boss it very quickly turns around that he starts talking to him differently uh, with more disrespect or completely with disrespect and then that's when he tells him that he's leaving and that he's going to start his own insurance business um, and then he tells right. him you'll be poor in a week it's like wow you're a dick too yeah <laughs> but oh, and, uh, yeah and, and that that idea that the film kind of showed just the way Soul Man does and some uh, in some ways, but not. It's a wholly different thing here, obviously, because even though he's a black man, he's still a black man at an elite college in Soul Man. Well, <laughs> you know, yeah, that's, not... that is true. Yeah. Uh, so when Watermelon Man shows like him trying to integrate in society, it's also just him uh, finding that it's harder uh, for him because society doesn't accept a black man at a certain level, uh, and how pervasive white america is especially at that t how segregated it was like you said at the time again things are better now not they're not fixed but they're better yeah. um and i thought uh, even at the end after she leaves him because she just can't handle it i mean at the very end they have her call him up on the phone and they're friendly and she's like oh you know i, I you know and it's it, 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 i like that part where she says you know talking to you on the phone it's like it never happens it's like it's like not like that over here babe <laughs> And oh, and you talked about that. There was a nice contrast when um, when he's white and he comes home for dinner and she's watching the news about the riots and stuff. Uh, and he's I forget what he said because it was something along the lines of you know uh, they shouldn't be doing this or not not overly racist, but something like ah you know well if, if you know maybe if they didn't do that you know it wouldn't be so much. Right. Then later when he's in bed with her and she's starting to reject him after the phone call stuff on the news you hear that. Uh, an unidentified drunk black man started a riot at the yacht club. <laughs> it's the place, place he he started the riot at. And then when she turns off the TV, she just kind of says it aside. Maybe if they weren't so pushy. <laughs> and it's, it's like she does that flip just because now she's dealing with it, and she's trying to push it away. I I, I wouldn't say it's like nuanced, but it, it's right. I thought it was like a subtle flip that's definitely intentional in the in the script. Oh yeah. Yeah, and, and she, she never stops caring, and she doesn't reject him specifically because he's black, but she does reject him because society rejects it, and she right. wants to be part of society. Or I, white society. I, I would like to say, I, I, I think, oh, and the segregation thing, it said it, the, the bill was passed in 1964 to officially end it, but I want to say that I was, I've read that well into the 70s that it was still occurring, even though it was against the law. And I well, think it was mostly in the, um, ironically, not ironically, that's the wrong word, uh, unsurprisingly, in the South. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's like, yeah, you can have a law, but unless you're willing to enforce it, that's right. how much of a law is it? Exactly. Um, I, I would say that the old, one of the only things that disappointed me about this film is the, and it, it's again, it's a sign of the times, it's, it's 1970, but it's probably because of the ultra-low budget, the very poor editing. I, I would call it. Um, um, I, I would call it. That's like filmmaking at the time. You had a lot of that. Also, you did, uh, but bigger budgeted films didn't suffer from it as much, or kind of at all. Uh, see, didn't, it didn't really have any fade ins or fade outs, mm -hmm. which is usually uh, how a lot of these films were transitioned from scene to scene. This had a very like very abrupt stops and starts, and the editing, the sound was cutting out almost before the scene ended to go into the next scene it's just very it's choppy but it's 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 okay i'm not holding it against it i'm just saying right. that i like the film so much and if i really had to pick something about what i didn't like it would be something like a technical thing like sound yeah and, and, or, again, and, and, like, and editing Mel i should say melvin van peebles you're talking about a guy who was a cabbie who started who first became a writer when he was writing uh like a, a column about being a cab driver and then some passenger told him he should start making films so he did and he didn't know anything about it he was learning as he went and then when they brought him over to france with the, some of the short films he did he was learning there so he was learning in an untraditional fashion and he was 
still like a new filmmaker and at the same time experimenting a bit and so i you can see a bit of that also the, again a, a lot of 70s films especially the lower budget ones you do get that kind of editing i, I like I've, I've been yelled at by some people i do not like the editing in um the french connection i i it, for me it's it's off-putting yeah it's no you're right it's did it win for editing <laughs> <laughs> I'm, try, I'm trying to remember. That I, I don't think it won many Oscars. I thought editing was one of them. I don't. I mean, like, well, it's like the biggest thing in French Connection is always the chase scene. Right. You know, oh, the chase scene, which that's edited well. But when I talk about editing in that film, I mean, like, the pacing, it's almost as like, okay, now we're here. Oh, now we're here. Oh, now we're here. And it's just, it's like it's very blocky because they're, they're basing on a true story. They're not trying. It's like the narratives doesn't flow. Right. So, and I get what you're saying with that, but I, I get some, I just feel like sometimes it's like it's the kind of thing you'd never see in a film today. Uh, yeah, it did, it did win for best editing. <laughs> it did? Yeah. Uh, probably for that fucking. I, I, it's got to be the car, the car chase. It's what pushed it the over the top. Chase. Without yeah. the car chase, it doesn't win. Yeah, I, I just never, you know, maybe I'll go back and watch it again. But and again, I really me, do need to watch that again. I haven't seen uh, it in a long time. I just remember, like, at, like watching it years after the hype, you know, because you, know, you grow up hearing about the film. It was considered, I finally got around the watching. I was just underwhelmed. It's like, it, ah, you it, know, it was considered okay. one of the best films ever made. I I don't see it. I don't see it. I, I saw I, it. I, I saw it as a kid, and a movie like that as a kid to me wasn't anything. It was like, oh, okay. You know, I, thought, I thought the the characters are underdeveloped. It's, it's it's like a true story crime thing. So all they're worried about is getting the true aspects of it in. And, right. I, and I just so the story just doesn't. I it just ah, I just didn't. Uh, no, I hear you, man. I do. No, I, but uh, well, I, that's all I'm saying. I, I think some of the editing problems that you're talking about are just from the time period. Also, again, he's it's. You know, the, like the parts in the beginning when he first turns black and they do like the kaleidoscope wheel. It's like that's so '60s. It's not even funny. <laughs> you can You just. You, you just have to shrug it off. It, it is like, oh, what the fuck is? Why is it? Why? Why are we doing kaleidoscope colors? And just let it go. Oh well, yeah. yeah it's just. It's to show uh, the chaos of. Oh my God, I'm black. <laughs> I, I believe the Black Panthers approved of this film. Oh, I'm I, sure. I I'm I read, sure they did. That I thought ending. I read somewhere that like they officially endorsed it or said, yeah. Well, because they the me, a, the, the message, a, you know, whether people like it or not, the message is pretty strong. Yeah, and um, I, I I like the kind of mess that, that I, I like the very end where she, where because in the beginning they have him like he's doing the uh, the punching bags and and uh, right and skipping rope and everything, and then at the end she's she's I hope you're still exercising. Oh, I'm still exercising, and they cut to him in a basement with a bunch of other black men with like broom handles like, right doing like military he was like oh yeah and then that last shot is is uh just a, a zoom in on him just going <laughs> yeah <laughs> gonna take over this bitch well I, I think the message too is you you put anybody in that uh, or at least part of the message i don't know is that if you took take anybody and put them in this kind of situation where they're treated unfairly and uh and you know, designated second-class citizens and are constantly harassed by authority, and you know all of the shit that black people have gone have to go through over the years. If you take an average guy and put him in this situation, at the end he's going to be ready to fight too. Sure. And that's where that's you know when they because that's why I think why it starts with like the riots and stuff on TV, not because it's happening at the time, but that this is the end result when you treat people like that, and that's. I, I, I thought that came full circle at the end when he's down there, you know, <laughs> doing the military thrusts with a mop handle. Yeah, it, it, yeah it's, now, it, it's amazing. Throughout. It's amazing yeah. how much this film holds up with with that aspect. Now, with everything that's going on right now. Right now, beyond all of that, I mean, God, this could easily turn God, into a Strangers episode. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, say, as I was going to say, beyond all of that, Godfrey Cambridge is fucking hilarious in this film. He really is. He died way too young. Oh, and you know, I read a little bit about how he died. He he was on uh, making a film. Um, I, I have the name of it here. He was making a film where he was going to play Idi Amin, um, mm -hmm. and and that has now been famously 
been played by few people, but most notably Forrest Whitaker, who ended up getting an Oscar uh, for it in the last uh, the last King of Scotland. But I, um, I, wasn't it a comedy that he was starring as Edie Amin in? Well, according to IMDb, it might have. You know what? It might have started out as a comedy, uh, but it ended up not becoming that. If that's what the intention was, probably because he died on set. Um, right. Maybe the scene that he was going to be in was going to be a comedy, but uh, the film is called Gone Are the Days, and. Um, no, that's not what it was called. Uh, it was called <laughs> Victory, and uh, I don't even know how to pronounce this. E N T E B B E N T E B E N T E B E N T E B E. I don't okay. know. Okay. But anyway, he was going to play Idi Amin in that, and according to IMDb, Victory at N T E B E is uh, it says action drama history. So okay. the film was 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 made, but without him, or even they didn't even replace him as far according to IMDb to. Uh, for someone else to be Edie Amin. So it's like that part was completely removed. And didn't uh What? Didn't Edie Amin himself like say that that God killed Godfrey Cambridge? Yep, he was punished for... by God. <laughs> cuz cuz Edie Amin and God are just like that. Oh yeah, they're they're, they're good buddies. God's um, like you going to you going to go you going to you going to fuck with uh Edie, you got to fuck with me. Uh died of a heart attack on the set of the TV movie Victory at Entebbe. And to be, yeah. uh, where he was set to play Ugandan di- uh, dictator Idi Amin. Amin claimed Cambridge's death was punishment from God. And and I believe like the, it was a heart attack, but they kind of blamed it on his compulsive eating. I guess he gained a lot of weight, and that was only uh, what six six years, seven years after uh, Watermelon Man. That's yeah, six years. That's all yeah. it was. Um, yeah, they said it was uh, because of his poor diet. Mm-hmm. That uh, he had a heart attack. Yeah, but he is, he is just fucking hilarious as both the white man and the black man. Well, technically a white man as a black man, but you know what I mean. Yeah, I, I, just, I, I can only imagine the career that he would have had had he, you know, not died. Mm-hmm. Um, how many how many roles would he have gotten that were went to other black actors? I mean, he was, he was very good in this, and he's well, he was he was very good in 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 other things as well. Um, well, he was originally an actor. I mean, he started out as a regular actor, and he only started breaking into the business, be, you know, beyond stage plays and whatever he was doing, when he started doing co- comedy, and right. that was his in. That's where he started getting more I mean, roles. Think about it. I mean, he was he was he he knew Bill Cosby uh, through uh, Melvin Van Peebles. Actually, I, I think he knew him outside of that. But he had this connection, and Bill Cosby, aside from the trouble he's gotten into uh, recently, but. Just recently. Well, I mean, it's happened over years and years and years, but recently it's come to light even more. <laughs> but the career that Bill Cosby had, you know he would have taken uh, Godfrey Cambridge with him. Absolutely mm-hmm. would have. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind that the career that he would have had had he not not died. He, yeah, I mean, well, it's, 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 he's just... He's a very, very, a very boisterous character in the film, and lines that... It's just like the lines that sh- shouldn't be. I'm not sure how to say it. like it's not a natural acting, but it's believable. Right. And when when he when he slips, occasionally into seriousness, he's serious. Oh yeah, he he he's, totally he's, pu- he's pushing forth the message because he believes in it too. Yeah, I mean he you know? he easily performs on par with like as far as as far as a comedy actor. Uh, a comedic actor being able to, to lapse into seriousness. I mean, that's something you've seen in Richard Pryor. Uh, definitely not going to say Eddie Murphy. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, Richard. You know, but, Rich, people like Richard Pryor. Like he, he definitely can pull that off. But, in the same film. Yeah, I mean, I could see, I could see him being picked up by Mel Brooks. You know, uh, not replacing, oh, not, a, not replacing actors that Mel Brooks have used, uh, black actors that he's used, but finding parts for him. Or writing parts for him, or uh, just incorporating him in some way. I could absolutely see that happening had he not died. Mm-hmm. Really, I could. And, um, and, but it, it's just—it's just a shame that he dies, and then this film kind of fades away. Uh, and th- this film should be coming up whenever people talk about uh, like racial. I mean, absolutely. I mean, all, I, I mean, I'll, I'll bring it up from now on. 
when it, whenever you talk about films where you where you swap white and black in some way, right? This rarely, if ever, gets mentioned. Um, and this should be at the top of the list way before I ever have to hear about Soul Man or White Man's Burden ever again. <laughs> Which is not your challenge, by the way. I should hope not. <laughs> Although it would it would have been a good one. I was thinking about it, but it's not your. It challenge. Would have been a line. Uh, it's not your challenge. We did talk about it a little bit last week um, when you uh, challenged this to me. But uh, it is not your challenge. I, I have something else in mind. Uh, I think you're going to like it. Oh, yeah. You know, it's interesting. I, uh, I, I In doing a little homework on uh, Godfrey Cambridge, he left the set uh, of the, I guess it's a sketch comedy show called The Partners, starring Don Adams. Uh-huh. And uh, <laughs> I read about did that, you read yeah, that? It says on why he left the partners in 1971. Now, if anyone who doesn't know Don Adams right off the bat, he was the one that starred in Get Smart. Right. You know, missed it by that much. That guy. Uh, it says on the set, Don Adams turns into Captain Queeg. He doesn't have those steel balls, but he drove me crazy. Now he's saying the chemistry wasn't right. Don is so uptight. Finally, you have to say to him, hey, man, the price ain't right. I'm willing to get off. I still have the original lining of my stomach. You can't buy a stomach for $25,000. Which, he just... Basically, that's what he was getting paid. I mean, that's not a lot of money, but I guess that was the going rate. I wonder what Don Adams was getting. Anyway, uh, I'll get out while I still have my own. If you tried to find out who in this industry hates Don Adams the most, the line would run all the way to Phoenix. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, I didn't realize Don Adams was such a hated person, but I, I mean, I don't know if that's true. I mean, he's saying it, but uh, you would have you would have to think that there's some truth to it. <laughs> if if Godfrey said it was, then it's true. It's probably true. Now I'm going to tell you right up front. Um, well, no, I won't tell you right up front, but I'll no. mention it uh, before we sign off. Mm-hmm. Uh, anything else to add about the film? I mean, just some no, of the, what no. favorite lines. You actually played one of my favorite lines. In oh, the open. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Talk to Abraham Lincoln about this equality bullshit. Well, I was going to play it anyway, but I, <laughs> I couldn't find a trailer for this movie. Oh, no, I, I, I knew you weren't going to find a trailer for it. Now, yeah. I, I have the DVD, and, and there might and be, be a fair. trailer on there, but I forgot to, to look, I'll, to be honest. Let's be fair. If it's a, a trailer from 1970, I'm sure it was god-fucking-awful and, like, five minutes long. <laughs> this, this is true. <laughs> I try not no to... No dialogue. Thank, I, thank God you couldn't find the trailer, because who the fuck wants to sit through that? I, I did... Um, well, you know what's funny? Someone posted something that said, what, The Watermelon Man 1970 trailer. And it's just the entire scene of him running uh, to, you know, beating the bus in the beginning of the film. Oh. And I'm like, is this the trailer or is this just a scene from the movie? And I watched it and I'm like, motherfucker, it's a scene from the movie. But it's like, it could have been the trailer because the trailers were that fucking bad. <laughs> it really could have. Um, I really have nothing else to add to this. Um Except for the fact that I really enjoyed it, and I and it's going to be a part of my collection. Uh, yeah, as far I, as favorite lines go, um, there's so many. That's the problem. I, re- like a, I you know you know what there there are well, a lot. Um, well, because the character, the main character, he's a smartass, uh, an obnoxious, loudmouth smartass. So he he's cracking wise, white or black, repeatedly throughout the film. Yeah, I like. So, I do like the whole scene where he's talking to the one woman and asking her for a dollar. I'll give you a dollar if you run and stop short. Uh, I'll give you two dollars if you do this. Three dollars is ten dollars if you're a real blonde. <laughs> and fifty dollars if you're a man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the sweetest girl. Later on, it says like. Uh, <laughs> yeah, which I didn't realize that the uh, they were doing um, implants in like in the seventies like that. Oh. I, uh, I, I'm not sure when they started doing plants myself. And then, but, uh, you know what? It's one of those things where I bet if we looked it up, it was probably in the 50s or the 60s. Probably. They, they, they looked um, awful. But, but uh, you know, I, I would like to see your switchblade. Yes. Get out of my way or else you'll... You know, and, and that was an interesting part, too, where, where like... Uh, again, the, the film goes from, like, it, 
wacky stuff to the more like where you know the wife rejects him so he goes and bangs the swedish uh secretary right. and then she, she, she's like oh we could do this all the time and, blah, 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 and it turns out she just has this black fetish and he's like and he's like well you know that's racist too and yeah. I, I you know i i don't want you to sleep with me because i'm black i want you to sleep with me because i'm i'm me right and and so you know there's there's like a, a lot going on there it's like it's not even not even about even like being po- there, there's positive racism yeah, you know. oh, absolutely. So, so, uh, and that's an interesting part of the movie too. It's just there's there's so much going on in the film, but it's still a light comedy, except maybe the last ten or fifteen minutes it gets a little serious. Right. But uh, it's it's still uh, it's still yeah. I definitely if you haven't seen Watermelon Man, so yeah. And the title itself is also from uh, Herbie Hancock's song Watermelon Man. Which oh really? Is like a, yeah, it's a jazz uh, jazz standard okay. written by Herbie Hancock, and I'm not a jazz aficionado. I had to look a lot of this up, but I knew there was a song called Watermelon Man. <laughs> but it's um, but he wrote it back in 1960. Uh, I'm checking my notes. Uh, 1962. It was like a commercial song he wrote for his first album, and uh, it was later turned into like a Latin jazz combo, which a lot of people know instead of that one. But so yeah, it, it was a popular song at the time about the water. It wasn't a reference to black people. It was about an actual watermelon man that would bring the carts around because there was a, at oh. least that's what I read about from Herbie Hancock. You know, uh, so ob- it's obviously used here in that reference, but it has jazz background as well. So it's it's I wouldn't say a double meaning title, right. but it's got it's got a double origin, and that's also rooted in the black community since it comes from black jazz. The scene where um, where he's out all day, for his first day uh, as a working black man, he goes to work. He takes the first day off because he tries to become white with all these different methods. Mm-hmm. Um, but the second day, he actually does go to work. When he comes home for dinner, because he had a rough oh, yeah. day. Like the first day, how was your day? Oh, it was a rough day. And then he's telling her that he did like 13 out of 15 sales. Like he was like on fire, you know, because uh, he's a white guy because <laughs> uh, life is great then when on his first day as a black man uh working uh he actually does have a pretty fucking rough day and she fixes him dinner and it's what what i, I believe it was fried collard chicken. greens fried chicken and a whole wedge of watermelon and he's like what the hell is wrong with you she goes i didn't think of it and i didn't think anything <laughs> of it at the time <laughs> it's like what's wrong with you woman I there's a lot of little jabs, like, like when again, like little things. It, some will appeal to you more than others based on just you know your your uh, personal taste there. Sure. But like when he's in bed with his wife, she's like, "Well, you know, he's making sexual advances." He turns him down. And said, "We can switch sides if you want." Said, "That's awfully way to you." <laughs> yeah, the whole time where he's trying to get some, he's like kissing her arm, licking her arm, like doing. And, and I don't know if she was uncomfortable with the scene, but she she was acting that she like she was because. As in, well, yeah, in the I'd film, like, that's why she's not right. You know, she doesn't want to sleep with him because he's black. I, but I, I don't know I, if, I liked, if that was more real than anything. <laughs> uh, I, I, I liked um, when the doctor calls him up with the finals. Uh, well, you know, the, 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 the you're you're a Negro. That's it. You know? <laughs> yes, uh, I've been up all night, well, I, and uh, with Doctor So and So and Doctor So and So, and the consensus the consensus between all of us is uh, you're a Negro. <laughs> but I, I like the part where we talk about the soy sauce because he was using soy sauce as a uh, as a um, oh, his sunscreen, own, his own concoction, the, yeah, as a, yeah, as a tanning lotion. He said, uh, "We did a lot of uh, research, and as best as we can tell, uh, the odds of uh, the soy sauce is more likely to turn you Chinese than anything else." <laughs> <laughs> he was like, "That makes sense." <laughs> and then they're asking him his name about his lineage, and he says, "It's uh, Jefferson." Uh, what was his name? His name was Jefferson. Washington, um, Gerber. Got, Gerber, 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 and then his wife was uh, Althea. He, uh, he said, he, "Well, he lied, but he, he said her right. name was uh, Jemima." Jemima, uh, yeah, uh, Jemima. <laughs> uh, my God, he goes. Do you know? Back in the day, slaves, when they were free, they took the names of presidents mostly. <laughs> it's like, oh my God. Now, what do you, what do you want to rate Watermelon Man? Uh, what's it currently rated at now? Six point six with a, with uh just a hair under twelve hundred votes. I'd be very comfortable giving this a seven or an eight. Uh 
I was going to lean towards six, but I'm okay with a seven. I'm very comfortable giving this a seven. I'm, I'm not. I'm not so much because just because, like you said, the editing is a bit off in some areas. Uh, it's not as polished as you would expect I, for I, a film. I wouldn't. I wouldn't take. Uh, I wouldn't take too many points off because of the editing, because the film as a whole still gets the point across. The acting is still right on there. Um, I'd be very. I mean, I'd be okay with a six, but I think I'd be more comfortable with a seven. I'll 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 put enough weight guilt behind that to make it a seven. <laughs> okay, that works for me. Okay. All right. Cool. And. Yeah, I just rated that, and uh, there's really nothing crazy about the demographics. Uh, older oh. people liked it a little less than younger people. <laughs> oh, really? No, no, yeah, and no <laughs> IMDb staff rated it. Yeah, they're afraid. Well, it, it's Pussies. very subtle. Uh, age 45 and over, the average is 6.3. Um, aged under 18, there's only one uh, person under age 18 that rated it, but they gave it a 7. And then the rest of the ages, up until... 45 and older is 6.9 6.8 so a very very subtle uh degree there it's funny the, the the picture that imdb has like the main picture for Ge uh, godfrey cambridge is watermelon man yeah They're, they don't yeah. even have they have other photos of him but they decided to use that movie for some probably reason. the biggest thing he did I and mean, he died way too young to to you know go he, move on from that i guess he really did he was already working through the ranks and uh Maybe Don Adams had him killed. <laughs> possible. Uh, it's definitely possible. You know, and I, I, I would have to say, and this might be wrong, but looking at how the ages, uh, the older people get, the, the, the less stars they give the movie, uh, I guess you'd have to say that there probably are more racists over the age of 45 than there are. Well, yeah. Well, that's why I made yeah. that comment earlier. Um, but then it could also be the people, uh, like you mentioned before, saying, you know... You know this 1950s, uh, you know, drama, whatever. It's kind of dated. It's like you know, it's like Dick. Uh, it's 1970. Shit. That's why I didn't complain too much about the editing because it is a sign of the time. But I was just yeah. If I really had to find something that I really you know, had to pick apart right. about it, it would be the editing. You no, know, what bothered me was like when they were in the house. Yeah. The 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 um the interior design was very dated. I mean, it was it was yeah, like something out I of mean, the 70s. Like, did, it's you very... that, did you see that wallpaper and paint? I mean, come on. <laughs> The fuck? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, let's go fuck yourself. <laughs> fuck. All right, so my movie challenge. Well, I, real quick, I want to tell you what mine would have been if I was if it was the other way around. Okay, cool. Uh, Mel, Melvin Van Peebles was is a, is he's still alive? I want to say he was. Is. He did. It, so, he directed something this year. Yeah. No, he's still moving around. Um, yeah, he's like eighty-two. I like I, I like the one quote. Uh, by him that I saw. It says, uh, um, so I'm not going to let the accolades come to me when I'm in a wheelchair. Get a little more feeble, Melvin, and we'll recognize you. Right now, I'm a little too dangerous. I intend to stay dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> he, he ain't stopping. Uh, Good. So Good he, for him. But he's a musician, actor, and director. And one of the films he acted in is Fist of the North Star. Oh, the live action film? A live action Fist of the North Star. You bet your ass I would have challenged you to that if it was going that way. Um, you know what? I want to <laughs> say that never was released theatrically. Really? I, I want to uh, say I want to say that was direct to HBO. <laughs> I believe it premiered on HBO first. Aww. But let me let me check. Yeah, it was released in Japan. Yep, it was released in Japan in 1995. Well, they and had then, to. Then everything else was video premiere. USA was TV premiere, which was, which I'm almost positive was an HBO or Cinemax. I think you're TV right. TV yeah. premiere. I remember seeing the, the the trailer for it, and I'm like, "Holy shit! They actually did it. They actually <laughs> tried to make a live action film." Of the fist, fist of the North Star, I was Try, tried is the best word for that sentence. Yeah, yes. and and I could I can honestly say I was never excited, but I knew I had to watch it. Now, when the film opens up with him doing all the karate bullshit and then just touching him and the guy's head explodes, <laughs> I I started at that very second. I'm like, there's no way they got this fucking right because that wasn't <laughs> done perfectly, but it was done close enough. 
I'm like, there's no way they're going to do this the right way. And then the movie was downhill from, yeah. from literally that point on. That's the one point where you're like, this won't, this won't be too bad. So, yeah, yeah, it will be. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah no, no, no. It, everything from, uh, from uh, Jago being done wrong. Uh, Chris Penn played Jago in that film, oh. but he called himself Jaggy instead it's like why are you changing the name what's the difference jago jaggy why are you doing this <laughs> the fuck is wrong with you <laughs> uh, they got yeah. american actors to play japanese it's just stop Fuck, fucking america fucks up so many things uh this past weekend uh we're watching ad fab because this weekend the new absolutely fabulous movie came out you know oh yeah and oh, that, uh, we I, were watching i, 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 I was says, made to know yeah, go ahead. I was made to know that it was coming out because I was I was ordered to make sure that we had all six seasons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were watching some of the first season the other night, and I mentioned to Holly, said, did you ever see the American pilot when they tried to redo it here? It's like, no, there was an American version? So yeah, but the pilot didn't do well because they took out all the references to alcohol and drugs. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it was... It what was, the fuck is this? <laughs> it was Jackal. That's who... Uh, Chris Penn played Jackal. Oh, Jackal. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> uh, didn't they also try and do a, an American version of Red Dwarf, which failed, which actually never got past the pilot? Yeah, that was just yeah, bad. That was awful, um, too, if I remember correctly. Now, they, they did an American pilot uh, with John Larroquette uh, that tried to re do an American version of uh, Faulty Towers. I saw that. That wasn't too bad. I could see that almost working with John Larroquette. It almost did. The only problem was they made him too sympathetic. Like they, like they pulled the punch. Like like it was going well, and then halfway through, like he shows like a heart or something. It's like, oh, what the fuck are you doing? Uh -huh. They they could they couldn't they they we weren't into that area yet where things like were were we were comfortable with TV shows that we didn't like the characters. Right. We weren't at that stage yet. It was too it was too prime time sitcommy. And it's just uh, this is before like House and shit. We're now we we like right. characters that we don't like or uh, that are mean. And to correct myself, the in Fist of the North Star, the Japanese animated, it's Jaggy, not Jago. Uh, oh, I actually got it wrong. I said that the film used Jaggy, and they were it was Jago, but it was actually Jackal and Jaggy. Right. So whatever. Yeah. Um, because I can't let that shit go into the ether and me be not correcting myself well you got it you got it we're good so what do you what are you challenging me sir all right so initially i could have you know just done white man's burden and gotten it over with and i really didn't want to do that uh because uh we've done two films in blackface and then we we did a swap of you know uh, white people are bad black people are perceived to be the um, master race uh, so to say in white man's burden and I was like, eh, I really don't want to do that. Um, so I decided... Master race? Well, he does mention that. He goes, you're the master of your own race or some shit like that well, in the beginning they, of this they, film. They, they just, so, swapped, they just right. swapped black people and white people and, and that was supposed to have a meaning and right. it didn't. It was just fucking stupid. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, and I was going to challenge that because we did go see that in a theater together and I was like, you know what? I'm, I don't want to do that. I want to get away and, from that a little bit. I want to do something a little bit more fun. And you don't want to do white chicks. I don't want to do white chicks. Because, like, I have it now. But, yeah, no, that's good for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I didn't want to do that. But I kept thinking of this other film the whole time. Specifically, when he wakes up black. That is the connection. Waking up and being someone else. You know where I'm going. No, I don't. It, I'm going, the genre is body swap. Okay, body swap. Okay, so the connection is waking up and oh, being someone else. Shit. All okay. Right. There, there's a lot of body swaps. Right, but I think you're going to like the one I'm going to challenge you. And I'm going to give you an actor, and I'm going to make it super easy, and you're going to get it. Hang on. Well, don't, don't even do that yet. Let me just go run through it, because the the, the big the, the most famous or the most popular body swap, and it's not technically a body well, here, swap. But before because, before it, you do that, I want to tell you what I was going to challenge you to other than White Man's Burden. Okay. The one guy that cut, that's in the house uh, saying, the very stupidly fumbling over his lines, we're very concerned about our neighborhood. We're very concerned about our house values. That was, that was the uh, move out, nigger. Yeah. That was that guy. <laughs> um, yeah. The only thing I can think of uh, 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 in that scene is Luca Brasi from The Godfather. And I was like, do I want to challenge Scott to The Godfather? No, you don't. And, and 
Just <laughs> make make him watch The Godfather. I said as much fun as that would be, and have you, him you know, just shit on the film the whole time. And me just, I was like, you know what? I don't think that's going to be a very good episode. So I decided <laughs> against it. Uh, then there was White Man's Burden. Decided against that. Um, and then I just started thinking about you know more seventies. Uh, you know, uh, uh, black exploitation. I'm thinking of the, you know, sweet. Uh, the, the what was the other one? The sweet, sweet back or whatever it was. Badass sweet, song. Sweet backs, badass yeah, song. Yeah, I was thinking that. I was thinking maybe I'll do a Mario Van Peoples film like Solo because it's Ma- Melvin's son. Because <laughs> I think he had have, a small part in that, and I'm like, that's an I, actor connection. I like the last line of the film, and I have the novel the movie's based on. Oh so, really? Okay. Just throwing that out there. Well, and, and, and you know what? Then I could have talked about how the same. They they use the same font that they use on solo brand cups and products, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, Did, really, the same fucking font? It's like Sony using the same font on their PlayStation systems and the movie Spider Man. It's the same font. It's like you fucking un- unimaginative, like dicks. Um, so then I decided that I was gonna stick with my original body swap because of the connection being falling asleep. Waking up as somebody else. So right. go ahead, continue. I I just want to just off the top of my head. This is not going to be hard to guess. It really is. Okay, but I just want to go through what I'm already going through my head right now. All big right. is the big one. That's the biggest like right box office. But that's a good of- film, and I and I really like that film. So I avoid. Yeah, it's it. not bad. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't knock it really per se. Then you had after that you had like a bot. Or not even after that. Uh, the original body swap comedy is Freaky Friday, the original one, yep. as far as like mainstream. Uh, they did the remake of that with um, Jodie Foss, not Jodie. No, Foss. it was uh, Lindsay Lohan and, and uh, Jamie, Jamie Lee Curtis. Jamie Lee Curtis, that's right. Yeah, right. Now you also have a string of body swap comedies, uh, bo- uh, mainly having to do with father, son, or old young person. Yep. Uh, because of, and again, that's because of, like Freaky Friday. So you've got eighteen again. Uh, you've got vice versa with Fred Savage yep. and uh, and uh, and uh, Judge Reinhold. Uh, Eighteen again is George Burns and right. some kid. Uh, yeah, there's who a- uh, who played uh, Ferris Bueller in the TV show, the TV show, the Ferris Bueller. Oh, yeah. They they made a TV show Ferris Bueller and he was Ferris. Yeah, I remember that didn't do well. But then Funky Winkerbean, which was which was kind of like a t- t- take, wasn't that a takeoff on Ferris Bueller and that did better. That wasn't. That's a comic strip. You're thinking of. I know what you're thinking of, and it wasn't Funky Winker Bean. It was something along that line, though. It, it was. Oh shit! What is it? His name began with a D. Uh, Parker Lewis. The oh, Avengers Parker of, Lewis, of Parker Lewis. Lewis. Yeah. Or so something like, yeah, like Parker that. Parker Lewis can't lose. Parker. That's Lewis what can't it was. Lose. Yes. Yeah. That that actually became more popular than the was, than the show ripped was, off. It was, so that was way funny. more popular. I think. Yeah. It, way. I think it had two. Anywhere from two to four seasons, I want to say. I'm gonna find now, out. Now, oh shit! I know what you're challenging me. Of course shit, you I do. I just thought of it. But there, now there was a film about a, a woman, uh, a, a, a sexist man that wakes up as a woman. I don't remember that. I don't think it did well. Was that White uh, Chicks with the? Uh, what? There's a film. Oh, um, I know which one. That's Blake Edwards. Um, yeah, yeah. What I, was that? That one. Shit. That oh, fuck. That was a Blake Edwards film, and it had uh, Jimmy Smits. Uh, he played a love interest. The woman, who I can never remember her name, she was blonde. She, uh, the the guy who was, uh, you know, a sexist uh, f- womanizer. He wakes up as her, and fuck. Right. What, what was the name of that movie? I could find that easy. That I, was like I, in the nineties, though, right? No. Switch. Was it switched? No, switch. Not switched. Switch. And that was Blake Edwards, right? Am I right with that? Uh, yeah, um, well, that switch was Steve and Walter used to have a preference for blondes, then Steve was murdered and came back as one. Okay, it's a little diff- uh, the little. Well, it's not body swap, but yeah. It, 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 and it, it's not the one I'm thinking of. Oh, really? No, it's not. It, 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 I, it, I don't remember this one. I have to, I have to, I have to find out. Oh, it, and, it's and in it the is, back it of is my Blake head. Edwards, and it's Ellen Barkin. And I remember when she, she has sex with Jimmy Smith, she gets drunk, she doesn't remember it, and she tells him that she's a virgin. For whatever uh-huh. reason, that always stuck in my head. <laughs> I bet it did. Oh yeah, baby. Uh, so I mean, that's just off the top of my head. Body swap show, and then, and then, and then of course, you get stuff like Face Off or um, Selfless, which just came out with mm-hmm. uh, what's his what's what's his name? The, the Ryan big guy, Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. 
but he was yeah. also in another body switch film with Jason Bateman called the uh, the the game. Oh yeah, cha- No, not the game changer. Um, game change wasn't it something like that? Uh, yeah, it was something like that. Parker Lewis had three seasons. Um, oh fuck! No, not game change. Yeah, you have to look it up because it, it, yeah. it's. I I know what it is because it was one of the films. I was like, ah, that's kind of cheap. If I challenge you to that, I never really watched it. Um, it was called. Oh, where are you? The change up. The change up, right? The change okay. up, which had yeah. which is awful. It's got terrible CGI on the babies, because uh, uh, Jason Bateman has twins or some shit like that. Uh, it's bad, very bad. Now, he did that film the same year he did Green Lantern. Yeah, <laughs> I, I feel the need to mention this. We mentioned I mentioned Freaky Friday. Yeah, based based on a, uh, a, a young adult or kids novel. I didn't really have young adult back then. Um, there was a book where the father and son of the same family also swap bodies, and that was made into a made-for-TV movie. And I forget the kid that was in it, but the adult was uh, that one comedian. I can't stop moving my leg. Um, I can't stop moving my leg. That, that was it. Was, it was like one of his big skits he used to do. I can't stop moving my. Uh, I, I forget. I'm fucking forgetting his name. But that, but there was a, a, a sequel huh. technically to Freaky Friday before it became a. Uh, really okay. For, yeah, before it was remade, uh, I, I just felt the need to s- share that useless knowledge. That's all. Cool. But yeah, I, going through all the body swap films, I hit in my mind the one that you're going to challenge me to, obviously, which is going to be all of me. It's not all of me. Oh shit! Okay, because then there's all of me, which isn't really a body swap. It's kind of a body swap because they both enter the same body, but mm. you have the character. Uh, you have the you know the characters right. act. Uh, you have um, Steve Martin pretending acting as her. And uh, what's her face? Uh, incredibly shrink- uh, shrinking woman, Lily Tomlin, right? Lily Tomlin, yeah. right? And that, it's definitely more of a possession film, but body swap because there is body swapping going on during the film. Right. So that it is technically a body swap film. Um, Fuck! I thought I had it nailed. I thought, like, oh, he's going to challenge. I, I actually didn't think of that film to challenge. And I really? would I wouldn't have anyway. Now have I mentioned the film that you challenged me? No, you haven't. Holy shit. Okay. Yeah. Um hang on. Give me give me one all right, give me one small tiny hint. Because uh, I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed that I didn't hit it already. Okay. Um I'll give you an actor if you want. No, no, well give me something even tinier than that. If it's tinier, if the actor obvious tinier than that. Oh, uh, well, this if I gave you this actor, it wouldn't be so much because he's kind of like, um, he's the friend of the person that uh, gets uh, into the body swap situation. Not my shaggy dog. That's no, definitely no, a it's not, it's not right. that. It's not that. Although, did you see that they're doing something similar with that? It's not shaggy dog. They remade that. But they're doing one with, uh, uh, what's his face? Um, uh, fuck. Um I'm just drawing a blank tonight. Uh, Usual Suspects. Um, what's his face? He got an Oscar. Kevin Spacey. For that. Kevin Spacey, where he's a cat because he's an asshole and his oh, family. Oh yeah, yeah, I saw the trailer for that. And that looks god awful. It looks. That makes me wa- fucking awful. That makes me want to watch the Garfield movie. That's how bad that looked. <laughs> I just love Shit. Bill Murray's scene in uh, <laughs> in Zombieland. Do you regret anything? Maybe Garfield. <laughs> <laughs> That um, trailer, that trailer made me want to watch fucking um, the remake of that darn cat. That's how bad that trailer was. Okay, I'll give you a hint. There's a scene in the film when uh, both people realize that they've swapped bodies, where the friend is in the kitchen with both of them when they both realize because they both wake up and they're both running into the kitchen, and the friend looks at his other friend and he just says, "I don't." fucking believe it yeah you, you, nothing you better give nothing. me an actor all right uh i'll give you the friend's name not the person that actually goes for the body swap sean astin is in the film as the friend oh not dream a little dream no sean okay. astin is not in that movie that is correct but <laughs> still still that you know that age group that was you know Sean Astin. Oh. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't challenge that film either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, and I'm, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm upset that I forgot that film. Uh, it, yeah, I didn't, I didn't think of that one either. But I still wouldn't have challenged it to you. Oh, I need another hint. This is bothering me okay. now. I, I should have um, got this this, quicker. Okay, this, uh, the the person that goes through the body swap is Kirk Cameron. Oh, that's um. 
oh, it's, I missed that one when I was going through it. It's Kirk Cameron and Dudley Moore. Yep. And it's um, 30 all over again, or? Uh, no. What's what's the title of that? Like Father, Like Son. Like Father, Like Son. Okay. That, I, you know, I fucking missed one. Probably, I all those. probably that my that... favorite uh, bad body swap movie. That should have been included in the vice versa, uh, uh, thir- thir- you know, uh, thirteen to thirty. There's actually one with a girl that becomes. It's a female version of Big, where the girl wishes she was an adult girl woman, and oh she yeah, that's thirteen going on thirty. Yeah, thirteen. That's recent. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, which actually did well financially. Uh-huh. Um, but that's well, thirteen going on thirty. That stars uh, what's her face, um, uh, Jennifer Garner, uh-huh. um, and uh, she yeah. She wishes that she's an adult. I I should have for some reason I I, I went too fast for that. And I skipped uh, like father like son. I thought you were going to hit it when you were go, when you're going through the list. I really did. I I I just skipped it somehow. I in you know what that one's always in my mind because I'm a huge Dudley Moore fan and that's not one of his best films. So. No no, <laughs> but it's my it's probably my favorite bad body swap movie. Really? Yes, F- it, it was one that was played. Than- Wait, wait, favorite as in favorite one or favorite as in best bad one or favorite as in worst one? I just said favorite bad body swap movie. But well, well, you're still not answering my question. Is it your favorite one because it's the best of them all or favorite because it's the worst of them all? I would have to say my favorite because it's the worst. Okay. It's just, very, right. it's just very bad. See, okay. eight, 18 again is bad, but there's no... F- I, I felt watching that there's just there's, there's no fun involved. It kind of gets not serious, but it kind of does a little bit. Whereas there's a lot more fun in like Father Like Son, specifically Dudley Moore's part where he's the kid. You know, mm-hmm. uh, uh, it just I just thought that I I had way more fun watching that as a kid growing up than I did any other body swap movie. I remember I, I, all I remember is he sets the chair on fire when he's trying to seduce the woman, and right. he ends up pushing it in the pool. Am I correct? Yeah. All right, yeah, I do yeah. remember that. Um, and, and the thing is, too, you know, this is Kirk Cameron before he started to get really crazy religious. <laughs> I mean, you're you going to stop at crazy. Um, you don't he, was, have to he, was already, he was already going in that direction where he was doing the Born Again thing and he was starting to go nuts, but he still had a promising movie career, which he pretty much... Not destroyed because he's making a ton of money with the whole Christian films that he's doing, but he could have had a like a Corey Feldman, Corey Haim type career because he didn't OOD wait, wait. or anything. But I'm about to say you mean the one that didn't die, right? What, well, Corey Feldman is still alive, but yes, yeah. he could have had that kind of career. Well, what <clears> kind of career does Corey Feldman have right now? Not much now. But, That's what I'm saying. So. But, but well, no, I'm saying they they <laughs> fucked it all up because they were junkies and you know very stupidly spent their money and things like that. And Corey Feldman or Corey Haim just decided to go ahead and fucking OD. Uh, See, just wait, what you need to do is compare his career to someone who succeeded to say he could have had something. And you confused me with comparing him to two other people that fucked it up. Well, I only compared it to those two because they were they were the pro, the some of the biggest young actors or the biggest in that exact time frame mid 80s uh-huh. the, you could not get more popular than Corey, the Corys if, if, yeah but right but again growing up Kirk Cameron hey if he had stuck to it he could have he could have had a, 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 the career of Emilio Estevez <laughs> yeah okay uh, I can't think of anyone else that you know that fits into that exact mold of the teen idol actor that made it like the Corys did. Richard Greco. No. <laughs> <laughs> and it's Greco, but no. <laughs> I I use I've heard it both ways. There's only one right way. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard it both ways. Well that's good. You've heard it oh, wow. you've heard it wrong. <laughs> oh wow what? One of the one of the screenwriting credits yeah. on like Father Like Son is Lorna Cameron. Oh oh, okay course it is keep it in the family anyhow so that's my challenge to you like father like son uh i'm 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 very upset now okay don't be upset it's fine i am because i I like dudley more i'll I'll have to you know i need to find you need to help me find is i cannot find unfaithful yours oh okay 
I'll, it's, I'll, it's, I'll, it's I mean, like, I'm sure it's not going to be as difficult as uh, My Demon Lover, which is like impossible to get. I, I can find the original Unfaithful Years from, from the uh, 50s, I believe, but I cannot find Dudley Moore's uh, Unfaithful Years because with the young Armando Sante, because I love that film, and I can't find it. Hmm. All right. I'll look for it. All right. Cool. cool. Are we done? We are done, good yes. sir. So let's go ahead and end this biatch. Let's go ahead and do that. Episode, what, 216? All right, everybody. Thank you, as always, for joining us. Uh, yes. Episode 216 of Movie Sucktastic. Give or take. Give or take. No, that's the exact number of the show. Okay. Yes. Uh, you can go to our website at moviesucktastic.com, and you can download all of the shows there. You can listen to them there if you want, or tune in every Thursday at 8 o'clock and watch the show live, which is the preferred method. Uh, you can go to iTunes and you can download or listen to the show there as well. If you go there, make sure you leave us a review. We always appreciate it. If you want to leave us an uh, email, the address is themovieguys at moviesucktastic.com. If you want to leave us voicemail, the phone number is 908-514-4470. If you want to go to our Facebook page, it's facebook.com slash moviesucktastic. Everything we talk about, everything from trailers to... When we go live to the movie that we're going to review the following week and whatnot, it all goes there. Uh, if you want to go to our Tumblr page, that Scott very due diligently keeps uh, up to date. He's very good at it. It's, oh, yeah. It's moviesucktastic.tumblr.com. And uh, you can download the 100% free Android app for your phone, cell phone, Android device, whatever you're using. Uh, it's 100% free. Everything I just said is in there. Everything from watching the show live to listening to the sh uh, show, it's all there. Uh, and, again, it's free. Um, and if you want to do a search engine uh, lookup for us, Scott likes Google. Google it! Uh, you can do a search for Movie Sucktastic and we come up everywhere. We just did register two new URLs, which we hope that will spread the word even bigger. And that's bestworstmovies.com and bestbadfilms.com. Um, it's all in an effort to just get the word out. Uh, yes. To come back to us. Um, and that about does it. Do you have any words of wisdom, Mr. Wilson? Move out, nigger. <laughs> we're prepared to go to 100,000. That's all we're authorized for. <laughs> Man. <laughs> If we weren't ending the show, I would look up what $100,000. I almost did that. In inflation <laughs> is uh, almost, nowadays, but it's I got it's got to be like, I, oh, it's got to be like one and a half times that. I realized though that if I did that we you, you would have spent another 15 minutes talking real estate, so. Yeah. <laughs> that house isn't worth that much even yep. for inflation. Ah. <laughs> uh. Here, inflation calculator. Let's see if I can beat the <laughs> Let's see, let's see if I can beat the music. Oh. Uh. Let's see. All right. 1970 to 2016. Ha! $20. That's so funny. That's the default. Let's see. Oh, it's $621,000. That's bad. That's a pretty good fucking take. Sure. Shit. Go be black in Canada with that. <laughs> Just get out of this country altogether. <laughs> Seriously, go to fr just uh, go go to Europe. Just do that. Just do that. Uh, I'm so glad you didn't say go go back to Africa. No, because <laughs> that's like he's not going to say that, is no, he? No, no, I'm not. <laughs> and on that note, the music is over. We are out of here. We'll talk. To you. We'll talk to you next week. Told you to move out, nigger. <laughs> we eating here. No, Joey. No. No.